So here we have reached uh, to the part two of Mamdani fuzzy models and we are going to continue um, from the rule evaluation slides that we are going to evaluate the disjunction or uh, the conjunction of the rule antecedents and we know that for disjunction we need to apply the or fuzzy operation which is also known as the union operator and for conjunction of the rule antecedents, we are going to follow the and fuzzy operations, which will also be uh, called as intersection, right? So, so these two uh, expressions are quite familiar for you because we have already discussed uh, this in the fuzzy operator uh, uh, class, right? So now, now we are uh, going to evaluate the Mamdani style rule. How? So if you can remember what was our rule one, that is if x is a3 or y is b1, then z is c1. This was our first rule, right? In the uh, three slides before uh, here. So basically, if x, whenever we have have x equal to x1 we can remember if we can remember then we know that there we didn't get any a3 value right so a3 was 0 so basically whenever we are going to follow the rule 1 that if x is a3 that means if x is 0 or y is b1 so b1 was 0 0.1 there so basically that means we are going to take point 0.1 then z is c1 so c1 is means the measure of or the membership value of the risk factor right because the z variable is related to the risk so then c1 is how much we are going to operate this or function why because rule 1 states this rule 1 states this if we can go um, to the previous slides, then we can see that the, this rule 1 says this, that if x is a3 or y is b1, then z is c1. So, we are just following the same rule and we are just, you know, extracting those membership values we have obtained whenever we are going to take the random values of x at x1 and random values of y at y1 right so automatically whenever we are going to perform the or operation we know that this is a kind of i mean the maximum value of between the membership two or more membership values we are going to take and obviously we consider here that the values of c1 is 0.1 now coming to the rule 2, again coming to the rule 2, if we go back, we can see that the rule 2 is if x is a2 and y is b2, then z is c2. So x is a2 means whenever this x1, I mean cuts this a2, it will, it, I mean gave us the membership value of 0 0.2 as well as y1 gave us the membership value of b2 as 0.7 and whenever we are going to operate this and operation so basically we are going to take the minimum of these two membership values so obviously c2 becomes 0 0.2 that means whenever we are going to take the value of x as 0.2 and y as 0.7 and we are going to operate this and operation so we will obtain c2 as 0.2 if this is clear to you people, then let us proceed to rule 3. So, if the rule 3 stated us that if x is a1, then z is c3. So, a1 value is 0.5, I mean was 0.5. Obviously, if we go back to here that a1 value is 0.5 and obviously in the uh, C, Z is C3, so C3 value is 0.5 and automatically since X is A1, 0.5, then automatically Z is C3. So whatever be the value of C3, that value is directly copied as the new membership value of C3.
right so now the result of antecedent evaluation can now be applied to the membership function of the consortium that means what that means we have three different um, i mean antecedent evaluation value which are all which are everybody of them are the membership functions value so automatically from these three membership values we need to obtain one consequent which basically is our aim so to proceed to that defalsification or the aggregation part so basically first i mean and foremost we need to consider two major terms i mean which is very closely related uh, to those operations are clipping and scaling so what is clipping clipping is like this is the most common method right so basically we have num i mean more than one antecedent rule evaluation and we need to correlate those antecedent uh, rules so that we can obtain one truth value of consequent which is nothing but the truth value of the rule antecedent so that this consequent membership function is cut at the level of antecedent truth so this cutting process is called clipping that means we are basically going to slice the top of the membership function so this class since the, this is the kind of i mean clipping or slicing process so this clipped fuzzy set may lose some kind of useful information but also i mean irrespective of that fact that this particular process may have certain disadvantage still clipping is uh, usually preferred because it involves you know less complexity less uh, computational uh, cost so basically we can demand a far faster you know computational speed so that is why this aggregated output surface is very easier to you know compute in the later stage which is defalsification apart from this clipping there are is a parallel way of you know rule aggregation which is called scaling but the scaling is not so frequently used like uh, clipping but the you know the researchers often uh, see that scaling offers better approach because scaling usually preserves the original shape of fuzzy set so whenever we are going to maintain or preserve the original shape that means we are having the tendency of losing fewer very very fewer uh, you know uh, useful information so basically this original membership function of this rule consequent is basically obtained by multiplying all its membership values or membership degrees of the truth value of the antecedent rule so this method which is uh, hoping to use very less information can be very useful in fuzzy expert system where each bit of information is very very precious but obviously since there is a kind of i mean multiplication for each and every rule and we are going to preserve every bit of information every bit of shape so automatically this is much much time consuming this is much complex than the clipping process but obviously if your requirement is such like i mean like that that you need each piece of information in a very crucial manner you must go for scaling and uh, so it is be better to leave on researchers hand that which way of aggregation they need to you know follow whether that is clipping or whether that is scaling so basically that is uh, we may leave on uh, to you or and obviously according to the problem definition you are given now if i look uh, on the difference between this clipped and scale membership function then how the, do they look like so we can see that he, this is a kind of slicing approach you can see this is a kind of slicing approach because we had three types of membership functions right so those three types of membership functions each is having distinct uh, shape 
but here you can have that whenever we have obtained that this uh, I mean the final value of the consequent is uh, let's say 0 0.0.2 then from the 0 0.2 it is a it is a kind of you know slicing approach uh, of the C2 membership function and we are getting this shaded portion as our consequent fuzzy set which is having the useful information only but if you look at the uh, you know scaling method then you can see that it will you know this is maintaining the 0 0.2 value of the c2 membership um, uh, membership function but it is you know preserving the original shape of each and every you know membership function of the consequent part and that is why this shaded portion is the basically scaled you know, value of the uh, rule antecedent which is basically the truth value or the membership degree of the consequent part so now we are moving to the aggregation of the rule outputs and the input of the aggregation process is now either the clipped consequent membership function or the scaled consequent membership function and automatically the output is one fuzzy set of those output variables. So how does it look like? So whenever we have this aggregation of the rule output, so we, we have one consequent value which is 0 0.1 another consequent value is 0 0.2 and the third consequent value is c3 C that is 0 0.5 now whenever we are going to aggregate it all those consequent value i mean all those truth value of the consequent part then we can have this kind of i mean the uh, you know fuzzy um, set which is having this kind of useful information like this is this is the part of the C1 which is having 0 0.1 membership value or degree of membership. This is the part of the C2 which is having 0 0.2 degree of membership and this is the part of C3 which is having 0 0.5 degree of membership and this is the shaded area which is the uh, you know information uh, the which we need. And now we are uh, moving to the last step, which is the defuzzification. And as we all know from the basic structure or basic architecture of the fuzzy inference model, that defuzzification is a process by which we are getting the final output of the fuzzy system as a crisp number because we have started with a crisp number, crisp input. And now we have reached at a, at a point where we again need to obtain one such number. So the input is the aggregate output fuzzy set and automatically the output of the defuzzifier is a single number. Now we have reached to the end of the Mamdani fuzzy models which basically involves the part 1 as well the part 2 which is um, which ends here and now in the next class we will discuss about the different types of defuzzification techniques uh, through which we can obtain a crisp number from fuzzy sets. Till then, go watching uh, my video lectures and um, if you have any queries about uh, today's uh, lecture, that is part 1 and part 2 of the Mamdani Fuzzy Models, do, do leave your query in the Google Classroom and you will wait that uh, within half an hour I am going to upload the multiple choice best questions based on these two tutorials which you need to solve out and which you need to send me back as the previous class I mean previous class was uh, taking place so till then stay safe and keep watching thank you